if you are normal. No? And this is followed somewhat later by this second phase. It doesn't go back directly by the way to baseline, no? because you, you, have, you still have some circulating sugars, therefore you want that uh, insulin level to still take care of the remaining blood sugar level. No? And so when we compare this, what happens when you give that intravenous, that same amount of intravenous sugar to your type 2 diabetic patient, you can see there is no uh, first phase response and there is loss of that uh, second phase response. There is still quite elevated insulin even uh, 16 minutes later. No? Whereas there is a slowing of the insulin release in the normal patient. So you can see a definite difference, very big difference in terms of the insulin response to uh, glucose loading. And again, when we look at patients who are followed up for many years, that's why it's important to be considering newer therapies, is that we know that when type 2 diabetics become uh, stay longer, there is that loss of beta cell function. So what this is showing is that they followed up about 400, uh, over 400 patients in uh, Belfast, Ireland over 10 years, and they measured insulin sensitivity as measured by your homeostasis model assessment, which is really a formula. You just get a uh, passive insulin and your glucose level, and then you plug it in into a formula, and you get a number. You know? So it's a measure of insulin resistance. And, and then they also have a coma percent beta cell, which on the other hand will be a measure of the secretory capacity of your pancreas. You know? As you can see, as the years go on, the uh, insulin sensitivity or the insulin resistance of the patient, type 2 diabetic patient, remain about the same. But as you can see, the secretory capacity of the beta cell decreases through time. This is just six years no, from diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So the uh, conclusion from this study is that while the uh, beta cell dysfunction as far as uh, producing insulin or secreting insulin is concerned, is uh, worsening through the years as uh, type 2 diabetes go on through their lives, the insulin sensitivity remains stable. So there appears to be also a big problem as far as the beta cell, not just the secretion, but something else uh, that, that we need to address. But it's not addressed by the uh, uh, commonly available drugs. No? And again, uh, this is a very telling uh, uh, slide, this has been shown a lot also. This is again from the United Kingdom Perspective Diabetes Study. They also, they're also showing here six years no, follow-up from the uh, initial initiation of the study, again, measuring your beta cell function and the glucose control. And you can see here that they have divided the patient groups into those who are just on diet or lifestyle modification, metformin and sulfonylurea. So, what they have shown is that with whatever agent or therapy that you use, progressively there is loss of your beta cell function. And this is manifested by worsening blood sugar control. So whatever you do, whatever you use, there appears to be a, a worsening that is not controlled by our current therapies. So again, Going back to our premise that there appears to be a problem not only in your beta cell but also in your alpha cell in the pancreas. No? So, but as we shown, this is after a big glucose carbohydrate loading to type 2 diabetic patients, they compared it to uh, normal patients. No? So the uh, green uh, curve is for diabetic patients, the yellow for normal patients. So again, you will see. What is the glucose response after glucose loading? The, the range, the maximum for the patient uh, around one to two hours after uh, intake of the, this is the time they gave the uh, uh, glucose, is only less than 140, no? around 137, I think, for this group of patients. But as you can see, for the diabetic patients, the sugar levels went up to way past 300, you know, almost 350, even uh, beyond 
two to three hours after the glucose loading. So very significant abnormality that we're really that we need to address. And if you measure again the insulin, so this is again your insulin response, as we have shown earlier already, the first phase insulin response, you see that, that speed increase in your insulin levels in response to the sugar elevation, so you can normalize the sugar. No? But as you can see here, the insulin response for the diabetic is not only depressed, it's much lower than the normal, and it's also delayed. No? So it's not uh, in uh, timing, it's not in conjunction with the blood sugar level elevation. So now we go, so what is in, in the alpha cell that can contribute to the uh, diabetic abnormality? So we see here, we, we, we say that the glucagon is released only if your blood sugar is, is uh, low, right? So because what this effect is to increase blood sugar level. And so we see here that in the normal patients, after their intake of a high glucose load, their glucagon is suppressed because you don't need it, no? That's the normal physiology. So what happens in your type 2 diabetes? Even if their sugar is high, the glucagon levels remain unsuppressed. No? So there's a basic abnormality that, that is importantly contributing to the hyperglycemia in our type 2 diabetic patients. That, that's clear? That's clear for everybody? Okay. So now we go to the how these uh, impurities are uh, taken to the picture. So, as you can see, the, uh, our uh, stomach will, put, will produce substances after, our, after we eat. No? So that is called the enteroinsular signaling, which is an essential component of the metabolic processes that govern not only carbohydrate metabolism, but also for the other fats as well as protein. 